YouTubers know how fucking frustrating it is when it wasn't recording. You could have been spitting straight facts, but it doesn't matter if it wasn't recording. Hate that. Mm -mm -mm. She got YouTube with problems. You have no subscribers, girl, to have YouTube with problems. Okay. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Please excuse the lighting. It's 2 in the morning. It's been a really hectic heavy day and I want to say rest in peace to George Floyd and I want to say that black lives have always mattered and they still do and they always will and in addition to using our voice we need to continuously check ourselves and ask ourselves why we treat people the way that we do. Um, I think that's a really big part here, accountability, you know, so. All right, today I'm gonna share a piece of my story. And the reason that I'm making this video, in addition to the fact that um, March was Mental Health Awareness Month, and I knew from the start that um, I was gonna share this because really didn't have the words to describe why I wanted to put this video out there but the reason why I am putting it out there for one I really feel that God has put it on my heart to share my story because it's not unlike so many other people's story and I believe that we need to break the stigma of mental health because physical health and mental health are both just health and they both need to be addressed and cared for for anyone who is currently struggling with their mental health which I know so many of us are I'm going to leave um, my favorite resources in the description I don't know is it down below or wherever and um, yeah so that's where you could find those I'm also gonna leave a suicide hotline for if you are ever feeling like you want to take your own life or if you want to share this resource with someone else please do so i think that's all i have okay it's been a few years and i don't um, talk about it in detail very publicly but i think that there's lessons to be learned and it was a really painful time so as a precursor a, a viewer discretion if you will in this video i'm going to be talking about depression anxiety childhood trauma, sexual abuse, eating disorders, all of that. So if any of those things may be potentially triggering to you or maybe you're not a mature enough audience to be consuming that kind of content, then please click out of this video and maybe you can watch another one of my videos because this is my safe space that I'm creating here on my channel. So here we go. My name is Erica. Hi. I'm 21 years old and I was raised by a single mom who was a young mom. Growing up, I didn't have a relationship with my dad. I still don't, but we'll, I guess, touch on that a bit more later. I have a one and a half year old named Zoe. I am a single mom and I was um, a teen mom. So um, I had Zoe when I was 19. And that's just, I guess, a little bit of background about me. In my notes, I put, I am a single mom and a badass one too. I started struggling with my mental health when I was very young. Um, I think that my first real battle with mental health took the form of an eating disorder. That I think that was the first thing when I was 14. When you're talking about things like mental health, it's really important to address the trauma that goes on surrounding this because it doesn't happen for no reason but um when i'm discussing trauma or anything like that this is my fucking safe space okay this is not to bash anyone or to paint anybody in a positive or negative light this is just my life my truth my experience period so at this point um i had so 14 14 years um with an absent father my mom was a really hard-working mom she worked a lot obviously she was a single mom i grew up without having my real dad in my life and that's something i always struggled with 
I don't have a relationship with him to this day. My mom had actually been remarried to a really, really wonderful person who I call my dad. Um, and if you're watching this dad, hey, and I love you, and you're the best, and you've always been the best. And I'm thankful for you. But um, my mom and him ended up getting a divorce when I was in fifth grade. And that was really hard on me um, as um, someone who, I don't know, like, ha like really desired that father figure and had it for that time being until they got divorced. And it was just a little bit different because he still treated me the same, you know, like the love wasn't any different, but they didn't live together anymore. So I didn't live with him anymore. I didn't see him every day anymore. That was really hard and um, that was in fifth grade. In sixth grade it was when I lost my great grandma and she is someone who helped raise me and I miss her so much and I love her and that was really tough. And then I lost my grandma who was like my best friend who really raised me too. Yeah, those, those losses like really uh, devastated me and began to shape my life. <sighs> I really started struggling with my mental health when I was 14 and at the time it took the form of an eating disorder and also by this time I had experienced sexual abuse by someone who I thought was a trusted family member and interestingly enough because i didn't really know that this could happen is i i guess i dissociated or i mean a quick science lesson when trauma happens when your brain is still developing and your brain doesn't know how to process it it won't and it'll dissociate so i didn't remember this experience actually until very recently. It was basically a suppressed memory is what it was. And so I didn't think about it really until something triggered it. Recently, like recently this year. And um, yeah, it hit me really hard. It hit me like a truck. By this time, unfortunately, I had experienced um, sexual violence or sexual assault, whatever you want to call it, by, um, other people like people at school but um in my naive mind like i had addressed it and i was dealing with it and i was over it but no i wasn't over it and on top of that this happened to me so yeah i i i just that's something that was never discussed in house that age because i really didn't acknowledge that it happened to me until very recently I really struggled with an eating disorder. Um, I was obsessed with losing weight, how I looked, working out. Um, I was working out excessively night and day, running up and down the fucking hill in the middle of the summer, um, getting sunburned from working out all day. I was canceling all plans with anybody to... Um, to basically be obsessive with this part of my life and I was weighing my food with a little food scale to make sure like my portion control was portion I don't know and I was obsessed with um, getting on the scale and checking my weight every day multiple times a day every day multiple times a day I would go into the bathroom and I would lift up my shirt and I would turn to the side to see my profile to see if my stomach was getting flatter. This was like multiple times a day I would do this. And that is like no way to live. Oh my gosh. So that's the point of this video is that if you hear things that I discussed, that I did, mistakes that I made or um, trauma that I was, I was trying to walk through like as a young person, I hope when you hear me call it out that somehow this will help you, I hope. Moving to 16, um, that is when I discovered all of the negative coping mechanisms that we all know and love. So when I was 16, I started smoking cigarettes, I started smoking weed, and I also, I think I started to experiment with alcohol at 16. And 
you know, like all of it is hindsight. Like I know that I was in a lot of pain and um, I didn't have the tools to help myself, to heal myself. Um, so it was just all, you know, like covering it up and it's really common. At 16 was when um, I really started to struggle with depression and anxiety. I was a junior in high school and I was in a very rigorous program called IB. I'm not gonna get into that, but if you fucking know, you know. Mm -mm -mm. I, let's just say I was under an immense amount of pressure and stress. This is also the time when you're starting to think about your future and going to college and you know, it's an exciting but also really stressful time and a time full of pressure. And basically all all throughout growing up, um, I, I would say that I had a rocky relationship with my mom. Like, I understandably, like it's hard, it's hard to raise a child on your own and it's hard to do all the things. So um, things are a lot better now, but growing up like my my relationship with my mom was like difficult for the both of us I would say I lied to her a lot and there was like um levels I would say of toxicity like that's just what it is I just want to get into how I was feeling because this is about mental health and so when um my depression and my anxiety started to creep in for real um I wrote down that I felt that I was doing everything wrong I felt that I would never amount to anything. I felt that I was hated. I felt that I wasn't smart enough or wasn't strong enough. I did not like myself and I pushed those that cared away. You know, my family or a lot of people would tell me like, oh, you have XYZ, why are you feeling XYZ? To be honest, I was told in the beginning that my mental health struggles weren't real. Someone who I I love and care about told me that, Erica, um, there's people in this world with real depression and real anxiety. Um, so you just really, you need to be strong and get over whatever you're feeling because there's people out here really struggling. And that really hurt me. Having a parent or someone that you love invalidate your mental state um, is not only painful but harmful to the process, you know. So I think that that's a big learning experience in and of itself. I see now, like, it just wasn't understood. Like, they saw me but didn't really see me, and that's okay. Like, it is what it is. And then now we're training, I don't know, a senior in high school. So the senior year of high school is when it got bad. February of... I was going through the worst of my depression and anxiety that I had, like it was the ugliest that I had ever experienced it in my whole life. Ironically enough, in February, I had just come back from watching President, I mean, clownful Trump get elected and I was miserable on that trip. I was so anxious. I was so depressed. I felt so alone and I had been looking forward to the trip like for the experience, um, but I realized like on the trip when I was actually like by myself with my peers but like by myself without my family i was like going through it i was really going through it and so yeah i come back and um at this time like my anxiety and depression is getting so bad that it's hard to do anything it's hard for me to sleep because i'm having these racing intrusive thoughts non-stop that i i didn't have the tools yet to not silence, but to deal with, and it was getting harder and harder to get out of bed, like to think about getting dressed was just beyond me. I wrote down again in my notes this crippling anxiety that caused me to push 
all but one person out so all but one person meaning kennedy shout out to kennedy but i i basically only had one friend going through this and everyone else that wanted to be there for me i just didn't let them not only did I start to push away the people that cared about me, but what I did was I started to attract quite the opposite. So I began to entertain and tolerate people that didn't really care about me and who hurt my feelings and who harmed me. And I was putting up with the bullshit, you know, and it's because that's what I believed I was worthy of. I... I didn't believe that I was worthy of the the care and the love and I thought that I deserved like the the all the things that made me feel like shit and that is a lie. Bold faced fucking lie. We don't deserve the things that make us feel like shit. No no no. And so if you're hearing these things and all the things that I did wrong, um or potential like red flags because this is all hindsight, right? Um, this is why I'm making the video. I'm sinking, sinking, sinking into the worst of my depression. I actually had been considering committing suicide for a few weeks um, before I actually attempted. And it feels very dark to talk about, but I want to make others feel less alone because I'm... I'm not the only one like I, I know it so I would look up on my phone like I was on the fucking dark web just looking up you know like you know what I was looking up and um yeah for a few weeks and I was just like scared like I was I was scared of what I was reading and I was scared of all the different things and I just didn't really know I don't know um I knew that I this is just my honesty i knew that i wanted a way out but i didn't know how it was going to be easy for me and that sounds awful and that's the truth so so the morning that this happened i got into a fight with my mom is what i remember which wasn't uncommon like like i said we had a rocky relationship um and I just, I left for school that morning and I wasn't okay. Like, I was pretty, I think, like, infuriated when I left. I, I think I just felt very misunderstood. I drove off to school and, like, uh, it's weird. I never, like, have talked about this part before. But when you decide that you're going to kill yourself, like, you really give no fucks because you realize, like, Oh, I'm there so I was like I was 18 years old side note nobody at 18 should be feeling like they need to take their own life so I on the way to school I lit a cigarette and I just smoked it on the way to school and I never did that because I gave even though I smoked I cared too much about what people thought so I didn't like I wasn't out like that but to this day I was and so I got to school and I parked and I just knew like I wasn't gonna stay there. I wasn't gonna be at school that day, I already knew. And so I parked and I saw the people walking by my car. And I had just like made it up in my mind like what I was gonna do, so. If you live in my city, please don't disclose the city that I live in. But um, in my city, there's a place that has a very high altitude it's basically a fucking cliff and so what i did was i left school that morning and i drove away from my school and i drove up 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 these hills or mountains and i drove my car off a cliff I was conscious the whole time. My car fell 150 to 200 feet and my car like just barely missed basically a boulder. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt because of my intentions and um, the airbags deployed and I ended up on the other side of my car when all was said and done and I actually ended up breaking my neck 
and my finger, which is like the least of anyone's concerns, but yeah. Not a lot of people know this. I have a scar in the front because they, I have plate in the front, screws in the back, and um, they, there, there's an incision like right on the fold. They did a really good job. So, yeah, you want to let that sink in. So um, immediately, like I said, I'm conscious. So I take the fuck a look around and I. Uh, I FaceTime my mom and she immediately tells me to hang up, call 911, and I do that. And um, I wait in my car for what feels like uh, forever. So I'm on the phone with the paramedics and they're telling me, you know, like assessing like my injuries and whatever. And, um,. Sorry, it's a lot. Um, someone's on the phone with me and they're talking it through with me. They're basically like trying to keep me on the line. They asked me like, can you get out of the car? And I, I couldn't, like I couldn't get out of my car. So they're like, okay, we'll just stay there. Like, are you stuck or sandwiched or whatever? I wasn't. And um, so then I wait for what feels like forever. And um, Finally, the paramedics come and they have to, well, they check me out first. Like we're, we're in the bottom of a fucking cliff. So they pull me out of my car and they're assessing my injuries and I'm complaining about a neck injury. So they're not letting me walk. Um, so then I, I get like basically airlifted, like on a stretcher out of the fucking cliff. They do not airlift me out of that cliff. Four men, I believe it was, carry me by hand on a stretcher up, up, up out of this hole that I have put myself in. It's my car that gets airlifted. Imagine having a broken neck and being carried up a fucking mountain like this. And the same thing happens with my car eventually. But... Um... I obviously get rushed to the hospital and in the hospital or in the in the paramedics I remember actually let's just rewind the reason why it's so fuzzy or so honestly triggering it's because the paramedics who showed up on site were being very insensitive with me as someone who just tried to kill herself they were saying, they were making jokes about, um, oh, did a boyfriend break up with you? Oh, did you get into a fight with your boyfriend? And um, super inappropriate things like that. And so I remember on the way there, as they're cutting off my clothes, um, they're basically doing the same thing, like just asking me questions and being inappropriate. And that's kind of a theme, like as, as we move into like the medical professional space when this happens, um, People don't know how to act. People don't know how to act with me in this point. So I just want to say that. Fuck. You guys, like this just, this just feels more comfortable. I'm sorry. I am rushed to the hospital and I am like throughout this process, I'm being basically re-traumatized by the people that are being very insensitive and don't know how to talk to someone that's in this fragile state. So... I get to the hospital and um, basically right off bat, my neurosurgeon comes in and is like, you broke your neck, I'm gonna have to operate or you might die or be paralyzed. And I was just like shitting my pants, of course, crying, so scared. Um, crying with my mom and her husband at the time. And I, I went through my surgery and I remember it like it, it was something else um my recovery after i was on a 5150 suicide watch because that's what happens when you try to kill yourself and you go to the hospital and so these nurses that were trying to take care of me or that were supposed to be taking care of me were just treating me like shit making me feel like shit um they would bring me my food and then they would take my 
my utensils away. And then they would like snicker about it like, oh yeah, because you know why she's in here. Yeah, take her fork, take her knife. And it was just some fucked up shit because they would talk about me like I wasn't right there. Um, like I was a crazy person. I'm, I'm, I'm not a crazy person. And if you struggle with mental health and anybody has ever called you a crazy person, first of all, fuck that and fuck them. Period. So, um, I, I have my surgery and I remember the first time that I walked out of surgery. So, out of surgery, I'm in a neck collar. It's a cervical collar. I'll insert a picture. And, um, I, I remember feeling like my head was gonna fall off. Like, it just, it, it, it really, really hurt. And I can laugh about it now because I'm a strong ass bitch and it was a little while ago. But, um, you know, it was painful and it was hard. And what was really, really hard was coming home. Recovery was absolutely brutal because at the time, I mean, I was still in high school. I hadn't graduated yet. I hadn't finished yet. School wasn't done yet. And um, on to, to, just, to just make it the, the cherry on the cake, my mom had just had foot surgery like a week, within the week or two weeks of me having my surgery. And so when I finally get home from the hospital, both of us are crippled and it is just a struggle. So shout out to Uncle Alfred for taking care of us, taking care of me in that time. We really needed you when you came through. Um, but I mean, if I was depressed before, now I was very, very depressed. But at this point, um, I was, you know, seeing a a few different people, a few different doctors and psychiatrists and what have you. So I was put on an antidepressant. And um, for anyone who's curious, because I actually had a positive experience with this antidepressant, even though I'm no longer on it, it's called Zoloft or Sertraline. If you guys have any questions about that, always feel free to hit me up because I want to be of help to you, if anything, and always. Um, and so slowly but surely that actually began to help me even though I was reluctant to take it at first and um, Yeah, I mean like If if you want to fast forward to today, I am not paralyzed and I'm so so blessed that I'm not dead or paralyzed um, I I have a beautiful perfect amazing daughter who I like love with everything with every part of me and i can't imagine not not bringing her into this world and not being here to take care of her and all of that so that goes to say like i'm in a very different place now than i was during this time and um that doesn't mean that i don't struggle with mental health because i do and i think that i probably always will um, but at that point my battery died, but I want to thank you guys for bearing with me with these random clip insertions. It's because I truly didn't want to miss anything. This video is really close to my heart. It's really important to me that I come across as authentic and honest as possible. So... I just got finished saying that maybe I will always struggle with being susceptible to depression and anxiety, but I can say with certainty that today it does not control my life like it once did. And to give you guys a few gems, just I know that this is not a one size fits all solution. That's not how mental health works. You need to go within and recognize your wounds that need healing but my favorite mental health my favorite mental health podcast at the moment is recovering from reality by alexis haynes she is a substance abuse counselor she is also a sexual abuse survivor she's an amazing woman she's also a mother i highly recommend her podcast and her also her Instagram recovering from reality she does a lot of positive affirmations on there 
I recommend the Shine app. That's a self-guided meditation and self-help app. I really like that one. And there's a lot of great free features on that app that you don't have to purchase, that you have access to completely free. Yeah. Lastly, I am sending you guys all of the love from the bottom of my heart and all of me all around. I wish that I could give you guys all a big hug if you need one. Um, I learned recently to give yourself a hug. Like, um, in the psyche, it, it, it releases, um, it releases something that makes you feel like you're being hugged by someone that's not you. It sounds insane, but it's what we do around here. We, I, I'm just kidding, but try it. The next time you need a hug, get into, you know, your, your zone and give yourself a hug and see how it makes you feel. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching.